sisters and brothers in Jesus Christ. I am Mary Colimon from the Evangelical Protestant Church in Timor, Gemin. I would like to greet all of you. Thank you for this opportunity to share about Gemin's ministry in solidarity with victims of human trafficking. Eden Seminary is not foreign to us in Timor because a member of one of our congregation, Elena Otu, studied at Eden, so your name is quite familiar to us. One of the core ministries of the church is to build hope in fellowship. That is what the Evangelical Protestant Church in Timor is doing in relation to its ministry of solidarity with victims and survivors of human trafficking. Given that our province, East Nusa Tenggara, is one of the provinces in Indonesia with the highest number of human trafficking victims, the Church cannot avoid this humanitarian ministry. Because they have no hope for the future in their villages, young people flee from their villages. They migrate to other more developed islands in Indonesia or even they go abroad. Unfortunately, they are not equipped with adequate education and skills and as a result, they are vulnerable to becoming victims of human trafficking. Therefore, our church ministry service is to build and nurture the hope that God has given to human for a just life. Since 2016, our church has felt it is important to develop its capacity to provide an adequate response to the issue of human trafficking. One of our ministerial division at the Synod level is dedicated to respond to natural and humanitarian disasters, including this issue of human trafficking. Through various preparation and in collaboration with a number of partners, finally, in February 2018, Gamit's House of Hope was established and started serving victims of trafficking and of gender-based violence. House of Hope is a means for our church to prevent human trafficking and to assist victims and survivors. House of Hope provides several services, for example, provision of a shelter for victims recovery, legal services, reintegration with families, economic empowerment, and education to congregation and local communities. As the name suggests, the House of Hope, Gemit emphasizes that hope exists in faith of God's grace. Through this very force of service, Gemit proclaims that hope exists when solidarity is built. From several reports of, of House of Hope, we learn that the particular forms of violence related to human trafficking include physical violence, economic violence, and violence that result from one's vulnerable legal status. For this reason, House of Hope services seek to address the needs of victims of these forms of violence with the, int the intention of preventing trafficking as well as dealing with and rehabilitating victims and their condition. In the following, I want to describe some services related to what House of Hope is doing about human trafficking. The first thing I want to tell you about the shelter. The shelter of House of Hope was established with the intention of protecting and restoring victims of physical and psychological violence. In general, the migrant workers who have been served 
at the shelter return to the province with a physical illness or are in a state of psychological shock. At the shelter, they receive support to regain their physical health and to recover from psychological trauma. The shelter are also function as a safe house for victims who experience security threats, either from agents who recruited them or from their own families. That's why the address of the shelter has not been made public to help guarantee the security of those who stay there. While at the shelter, victims and survivors receive lodging, food and drink, coverage of medical expenses, and various other basic needs. It must be admitted that until the House of Hope not a single institution in our town, the provincial capital, provided shelter services specifically for victims of human trafficking. Therefore, the presence of Gomez's household was very needed and welcomed by various parties. Today, the Department of Social Services, the police and other local NGOs often cooperate with the House of Hope with referrals of victims and survivors of human trafficking. In this way, the church is present in building hope together with the most vulnerable groups in society. The second aspect of House of Hope ministry is legal services. The House of Hope provision of legal services is important for serving victims and survivors who experience legal problems such as withholding of their wages by agents or employers, falsification of documents, and undocumented, undocumented processes of migration. In addition to accompanying victims and survivors when they report their problems to the police, House of Hope volunteers also accompany them at court proceedings. One of the challenges we experience is that Judicial process for human trafficking only indicates individuals who implement various phases of trafficking, but not the intellectual actors who benefit the most. Nevertheless, there has been some progress because at least some criminal sanction through the judicial process have begun to be issued. We have learned that the presence of pastors in court to accompany victims and their families has an impact. Often the victims of members of their families has little formal education and come from the lower classes in society. Often they are not adept at addressing their legal problems. Therefore, they need legal experts to help them. Not only that, it is not uncommon for the judicial process to be unfair to them. When pastors wearing their clerical collars are present in court proceedings, judges and prosecutors become reluctant to belittle the victims whose cases are being tried. As one of the major religious institutions in the province, the MIT has a strong negotiation position. This context is very helpful for the House of Hope, especially in its, in its networking and advocacy strategy. The Third area of ministry of House of Hope is education, education for congregation or for local communities. In collaboration with several parties, we create communication, information, and education modules. We create simple and popular forms of education, including through talks, sermon materials, pamphlets, and documentary films. For this education, we work through the co Congregational, Presbytery, and Synod Church structure. In this way, the House of Hope raises awareness about human trafficking and at the same time strengthens the capacity of church leaders to respond. We see that this is a good strategy for bringing the issue of human trafficking to the church. If previously there was the view that social affairs are not the responsibility of the church, 
This approach encourages church members and ministers to begin embracing this humanitarian work as part of the church ministry. Currently, an increasing number of Gmit congregations are aware of the problem of human trafficking. Changes in the church perspective on this issue has begun to spread, as seen in sermon that raised the issue of an, this, the issue as an important issue or important topic. Some congregations are also starting to be involved in the reintegration of trafficking victims into their communities. We have learned that good education can change perspective, especially when we have good materials and approach. The four things I want to mention is about economic empowerment. One reason people leave their villages to become migrant workers, either in other Indonesian islands or to go abroad, is because of economic poverty. Therefore, if forced to prevent and address the problem of migration and human tra trafficking in our context, cannot ignore the need for economic empowerment. In our office, the Gamit Synod's Division on Asset Empowerment and Economic Strength is tasked with economic empowerment, including the economy of returning migrant workers. We work with some partners to train and provide venture capital for farmer migrant workers and their families. The training includes development of horticultural or agricultural, weaving, and some other skill skills. We still need to evaluate the extent to which these economic empowerment services actually have an impact. And because of the social restriction caused by COVID-19 pandemic, we have difficulty interacting closely with migrant workers at this time. Along with the economic empowerment of returning migrant workers, there is also a need for continual advocacy of the government to strengthen the economic base of the province rather than relying so much on the revenue contributed by migrant, migrant workers. The pattern of exporting cheap labor rather than building up the local economic base of communities in our province needs to be reversed. Today, this has not yet been appropriate, a, priori a priority for the House of Hope's ministry due to staff and budget limitation. And for the last thing, I want to tell you about cargo ministry. One of the important ministry of House of Hope is cargo ministry at the cargo terminal of the main airport of our province. This ministry is important because it provides a much needed pastoral presence for families whose parents, siblings or children have died far away. This ministry is also interesting because when the bodies of migrant workers are sent from Malaysia or from other countries, volunteers that include Protestant pastors along with Catholic nuns and priests gather to receive coffins, greet family members and perform short service before the bodies are then taken, taken to their villages. This joint ministry nurtures a valuable ecumenical relationship worth recognizing and celebrating. This volunteer team even has a car to help deliver bodies to their villages if needed. If more than one body arrives at the cargo terminal and transportation provided by the government is limited, the volunteer team's car can be used. For family members of migrant workers who have died away from home, this ministry is a sign of solidarity. Although the experience of receiving a coffin is very painful for the volunteers, at the same time, 
they are grateful that these poor families are not alone in their grief. Churches and other civil society communities stand together with them. I want to share with you some of my reflection from the story I just told you. Lesson that we learn from this ministry. I want to mention two points of my reflection. One is about keeping hope alive. Hope is the power in the human spirit to see the light of the future optimistically. Hope is connected to positive feelings about one's own life, one's environment, and the future. Hope gives human strength to overcome limitation of the time, even to overcome the cause of life. Hope gives humans the ability to endure, even to struggle against the hardship of life and to rebuild their lives after great suffering and loss. Very often, because of life's burdens are so heavy, humans are unable to see the light before them and become discouraged. Losing hope can make people lose their vitality because they don't believe the future can be better. People who lose hope can hurt themselves and hurt others too. Hope is the main values in Christian life besides faith and love. That what we can read in 1 Corinthians 13, 13. Christian faith emphasizes that God, by God's grace, humans have hope. Have hope. The Apostle Paul wrote that God is working for the good of humans. These texts are often a source of comfort for Christians who are close to despair. Hope for God's providence gives strength to believe that things can improve. Hope in God's providence gives strength to strive for oneself and for others. The church has a duty to invigorate and to live out faith, hope, and love. Faith in God's love and action to create, save, and renew God's creation. Love for others and for God. And to hope and the hope that by God's grace, we can struggle for a better future. The basis of our hope is faith that God's love, God loves the world, including humans. The second reflection I want to share with you is about hope built in solidarity. Hoping in God means opening up oneself to be absorbed by God's divine power which gives humans the strength not to be apathetic, apathetic, but instead to be positive about life. Hope in God's providence also empowers humans to share power with others in the struggle for life. This Christian's hope gives people a reason to be in solidarity with one another, to encourage one another to endure difficulties and to strive for a better life together. Hope is found in fellowship. Lonely, lonely humans are very vulnerable to losing hope. People who end their lives are often lonely people. Solidarity among people is needed so that humans, whether as individuals or in community, Continue to believe that things can be better. Without solidarity, hope can wither. In community with others, people can share their energy of life and exchange resources as a response in faith to the works of God in history. That is things that I want to share with you. God bless you.